fact. Install Ubuntu, install Arch. And what does that mean? It means if you are able to install Ubuntu, then you can also install Arch. How to do it? I'll show you in this video. If you're interested in installing Arch Linux for Ubuntu, then you've come to the right video. What I'll do, very simple, is guide you through the process of installing Arch Linux from Ubuntu using a script I created myself based on the Arch Bootstrap. So, very little knowledge is needed. If you follow along, you'll end up with a dual boot of Ubuntu and Arch Linux. If you're interested in that, stick around for this video. And without further ado, let's dig into the video. Hello and welcome to a new episode of Tester Tech. So this episode is like mentioned in the title, installing Ubuntu install Arch. Actually, there's a lot of videos about installing Arch Linux on YouTube already. I've searched and I've viewed most of them. And as you can see right here, there are a couple of them uh, being shown, some good videos to be honest. So why even take the time and effort to watch mine? Well, like I said, you will install Arch from an existing Ubuntu installation and you will have an immediate dual boot at your disposal. So if something goes wrong, you can reboot and go into Ubuntu and fix it. Very handy. And also you run the bootstrap script. You don't actually run the installer and that immediately gives you an installation. And I've prepared a little post install as well. So for you to run once it's finished and with one easy command you can incorporate your new Arch Linux into uh, the existing grub and then you're good to go. So I think it's very easy to get started with this. And I think that differentiates my video from the rest of the videos that's already out there. So enjoy and uh, happy arching. Do I? Fact. I am older. I am wiser. Do not mess with me. Okay, sounds good. You could picture Jim on the left side uh, like the more friendly and approachable Ubuntu. And on the right side, the more serious, hardcore Dwight as Arch Linux. Uh, one does not simply install Arch, but if you view this video and you make use of the script and the way I do it, it's very easy to do. This video could be interesting for you as well if you recognize this image right here. So yeah, uh, let's jump straight into it. So I'll put in the USB live CD for Ubuntu and I'm starting the bootloader uh, at this moment from the live USB stick. So the installer is here, the install wizard and I'll click install Ubuntu. Just the default language settings. I'm going to choose a minimal install and not download the updates while installing. And now for the partitioning, I will choose something else because I want to have a specific partition for Arch later on. I'm going to select a new partition table because I want to start clean. And with all that new free space, I can start adding partitions. So first is the boot partition X4. Click OK to add it. So add a new one and that's, this is the boot EFI for 650 MBs. So I'll select the EFI system partition and it automatically maps that to slash boot slash EFI. So add a new one and that's the one we're going to install Ubuntu on. I'll decrease this one with 200 gigabytes and mount it on slash that is the root. So I'll add another one to finish up, that's the opt, and now we'll map uh, that to opt for the remainder of the, the disk. You don't actually see it here, but I checked all these boxes for the formatting, and when I tick install now, it will say it will overwrite all this data, but that's okay for me. Amsterdam, so as a time zone, let's add a new demo user for this and shorten the host name uh, a little bit. It's quite long. At the simple password, tick login automatically. So I'll not recommend this installation options for you if you want to have like a secure desktop. Installation is now complete. Let's reboot. First time booting Ubuntu desktop, you have to click through this wizard. 
So I'll click straight through it without too much fault. But I don't want to send the information. That's at least clear to me. And let's just click done. Now we have the desktop. Let's open up a terminal. Increase the font size a little bit so it's better to read. I will call the command df with tag mh to see all the disks actually and the h is for the human readable and the m indicates the mounted ones. And as you can see it's quite it's quite cluttered for a fresh install but that is really up to Ubuntu to be honest. I'm not going to go into a rant about Ubuntu, let's focus on installing Arch. Let's open up a browser and also install vim and git from the command line. Use the browser to navigate to github to my repository arch bootstrap. Switch to ubuntu branch. Just copy paste the command right here and we'll clone the uh, first before we do that we create a directory git and go into there and then paste the clone command it will clone the branch for Ubuntu and let's check the first part is the get arch bootstrap.sh so open up in Vim and this is the first line you definitely need to adjust that one in my case it's already set to STA4 like I will show you here so you see here STA4 is mapped to opt and we will install arch there another way to do it is LSB OK you have all your disks there. So there's two ways to see it. Okay, let's. Uh, that's already okay. Yeah, this looks okay. Let's just run the script and I'll show you what happens. Let's exit Vim and then run the script. And this will take care of all the installations and don't worry about it. And uh, yeah, it will just run and I'll probably skip to the end now. One thing you definitely need to know is that you run this script from Ubuntu and running the command arch chia root, that you will go into a, a locked a root version of the new arch installation so the files in the new arch installation so before we do that we'll show you the fs tab this is needed to put that one into the the new arch installation i will get back to that later because i think uh initially i made a small mistake in this regard that i forgot it but if you see uh, all these disks uh, all these trash partitions on ubuntu just remove them all these snaps, mount points and stuff like that, you don't need it. What I'll do here is just correct these UUIDs to uh, like the dev SDA4 in this case on this line. And that is mounted actually to the root for Arch. And the second one, dev SDA2, that is uh, boot EFI, so I'll keep that as dev SDA2. Okay, and then that one, SDA1, is boot, so I'll just keep that the same. So the most important thing here is uh, to know, uh, I'll, this is the for the new Arch installation. All right, small cleanup, and uh, let's save this file. Let me open the opt etc directory and open FS tab. As you can see, nothing in there. So make sure to put the right uh, table in here. My script should do it, but just check anyway if the right data is in there. And that part is now covered. Let's also look at the arch gh root on opt the directory. And please note that if you have these squared braces, it means you are in gh root. As you can see, I run the post install and you set the password for the root user. Depending on the speed of your computer, it can take a long time for the install to complete. But for the video, I skip to the end. And now let's look at the bootloader part. Let's call the make grub config command. So that's not this one, but grub make config. Out to boot. 
grub grub.cfg hit enter and then it will merge the new arch partition with your ubuntu arch partition as you can see in the output here it found the arch partition let's open up the file that it generated let's search for the arch part as you can see here this is the menu entry for arch the root is in there gpt4 so do not make changes to these files because they are generated there are different ways to do it but that's too much in depth for this video let's exit and reboot the system let's reboot and, and let's go into arch so we'll cut a little bit from the boot process and this is uh, the sta4 so the new arch partition being booted and as you can see you have the prompt arch linux right here as so a root and the password that you entered initially and to start just type start plasma wayland hit enter and just wait until the desktop is showing and you will see such a splash screen for kde for plasma and i will cut to the part where the boot desktop is actually loaded here you go and yeah let's open up a console and by default you don't have the dhcp client uh, connecting to uh, internet so i will just check if i can do something but i'll see that there is a connection error so the let's get the network card type ip add so you the enp 12 s0 that's the network card and of course you can also select the wireless but then you uh, maybe you should better use the network manager but so for the sake of demo i'll just connect to my standard network card that's plugged in give it some time and now you can retry it it should work ip address as you can see i have an DHCP server here on my network and let's uh, do the pacman command again and now it can connect nothing to do but one other thing for the heck of it create the obligatory uh, neo fetch screenshot proving that you have successfully installed arch and that's it let's go to the closing of the video that's it for another video i hope you liked it and maybe learned something new i hope if you followed along that you are happy with your new dual boot system arch linux and ubuntu so have fun playing around and maybe i'll create a follow-up video on how to customize arch but i think there are lots of content already out there and i thought this this one is unique so why not make this video to help you guys out Anyway, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and a thumbs up will be greatly appreciated. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.